Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, uh, yours and my paper crafting oasis in the trees. <laughs> That's what I like to call it anyway. Um, I have a super fun project for you tonight um, made with all celebration products. Um, of course, the cardstock and inks are not celebration, but the stamp set and embossing folder and uh, designer paper is from celebration if you don't know what celebration is uh it's the best time of year because uh everybody gets freebies which i love so customers get freebies if you host you get freebies and when you join you get freebies so uh, if you don't know me my name is melissa kerman and i am melissa's crafting treehouse and what you see behind you is my treehouse um, i call it a treehouse because i have big picture windows over there and I look out into the forest. So it feels like a treehouse, and I love it. Um, when you join in, please comment and say hello. I see there's um, there are people out there. Uh, I just see a number on the screen. So I love it when you comment and let me know who you are and where you're um, coming from and anything you want to share about yourself. Love to know that as well. Hi, Laura Lee. Yay. Thanks for commenting and saying hello. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, there's a celebration is going on, as I mentioned. We're gonna be using celebration products today. Um, in celebration, there's an amazing joining special uh, with two options. You can get up to, what is it, $60 in additional product over and above the great starter kit deal. Um, so yeah, it's an awesome time to join if you're interested. Um, let's see, and uh, yeah, there's other things going on, but I'm going to get to that later because I want to jump into the project. So, um, hi, Rita. Good to see you here. Ontario, Canada. How fun. <laughs> I love that. Um, oh, right. I'm going to switch my camera over and show you my desktop. Um, before I forget, please do share this video. Um, like uh, like it, like my page. If you're watching on YouTube and you're watching the replay, subscribe, like, follow, all those good things. Um, it really helps me to keep doing what I love doing and sharing. So uh, I appreciate that. All right. So this is the Celebration Catalog. There are 14 items in here that you can get for free. Several designer series papers. I think four of them. Uh, hi, Wanda. Nice to, uh, to see you here from Northeast Georgia. Thanks for commenting and letting us know. Um, so we are going to be using uh, three items from this little celebration brochure. And one of them is this item here, the uh, softly sophisticated stamp set and coordinating embossing folder. Um, they come together, you can get them with a $100 order, so it's one of the level two items. Um, and I've been using it a bunch. I really uh, love the sentiments. Um, I've used all of them and I've used some of the images. Um, made uh, at a team meeting uh, uh, earlier this week and we used this and the embossing folder is just so beautifully neutral and easy to work with and that's what we're working with tonight as well. And then we're also using this Flight and Airy Designer Series paper, um, which uh, is just gorgeous. If you don't have it yet, you haven't seen it, you're going to love it. So let's just show you that in sort of real life. So the stamp set, Softly Sophisticated, and the Coordinating Embossing folder right there. Um, it's, a, it's a great one. I actually was more excited about the embossing folder than the stamp set when I chose this option, but I've been really enjoying the stamp set as well. And then we're using this gorgeous designer paper. So it's called Flight and Airy and all these just beautiful, uh, the artwork is just gorgeous. Um, so the front sides, of course, are the most, um, you know, showy course. I'm just showing you little pieces here, ones I've cut up. So those birds, there's another one here and here and here. The original design is made with this pattern right here. You can see it on the card. It's so pretty, right? Um, thank you for sharing the, the video, Sharon. I appreciate it. Uh, and let's see. I think the only other pattern I guess I've showed that one. So, yeah. And the back sides, you know, are pretty neutral. Um, I haven't used them yet. Uh, the front sides, it's really hard to use the back sides when you have the front sides to work with. But this one is a beautiful one. 
and got some nice neutral kind of textural patterns. Love that one. So delicate. It looks like wallpaper, actually, but uh, I still like it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's hard to use the back sides when the front sides are so beautiful. Now, one of the things I like to do, and I did it with this paper in particular, is I pull out all the cardstock colors that coordinate with the designer paper. You can see there are so many colors in this designer paper pack. Um, so we've got uh, fresh, uh, what is it called? Um, Flurry Flamingo, Calypso Coral, Fresh Freesia, um, uh, Bubble Bath, it's new pale pink, Pebbled Path, Misty Moonlight, Boho Blue, Crumb Cake, Garden Green, Lost Lagoon, and Soft Sea Foam. A ton of colors. I think they're all, I've, I've got all the pieces of cardstock. So when I design, I can, you know, see them and then I can pull out individual pieces, lay it up against the designer paper, get some layering going and figure out what I uh, especially like um, when I'm designing. So I don't know if you guys do that, but it's really a wonderful thing. Now, one of the other things we're using today is this uh, called Hardfelt Hexagon. I think that's what it's called. Well, actually, I don't know if it's actually called that because <laughs> there's a stamp set that goes with it that called that's called Heartfelt Hexagon. Um, so I can't remember what this is called, but it's a hexagon. So easy to find. Love, love, love this punch. I can't stop using it, you guys. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to do it. Um, I think I used it last week and showed you some fun tips for using it. Um, and we're going to do uh, some of the same sorts of things um, today. So, uh, but this one, I'm not using the stamp set, but it does coordinate with it. It's in uh, the, is it the annual catalog? I think it's the annual catalog, but it is available and uh, the images coordinate. And then this set also coordinates. It's also a celebration item. And it's also on my top choice for celebration items because the sentiments are so useful and versatile. So just a little bit on what we're using tonight. All right. So let's bring back my sample in here. Um, now, this design is so simple, um, but it's got some texture in it because I've used the embossing folder. So we're going to take you through the steps for doing that. And it just kind of steps it up a bit. And we've got the texture with the ribbon and um, uh, it's popped up a little bit. Anyway, so this is pretty simple design. But as I was thinking about tonight's presentation, of course, I have to use a different pattern designer paper. I'm using the same pack, but a, a different pattern. So that means that I needed to mix up the colors a little bit. So we're using this piece and show you, see if I can grab the a bigger piece of it so you can sort of see it. So that's a bigger piece and it was cut off the end. So I just trimmed off, I trimmed it, cut it down to, I think it was four and 13 sixteenths width. Yes, I know that's very specific and some of you hate me for doing sixteenths, but the precision is important to me um, and it gets me the right um, borders that I want. Um, and then the width is one and an eighth inch. So that's a nice simple one. So I trimmed off this way and then I trimmed um, these three strips so that they would be continuous. Let's see if we got some comments I need to respond to. Um, you have it all except the punch. You definitely need the punch. I have decided this punch is a must have. It's just so versatile. So um, yes. Oh, I'm glad you're looking forward to tonight's project. Hi, Patricia. Yay. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with this piece of uh, boho blue cardstock. I decided to go with some different colors. Now, I probably could have done the green on this, but this new paper has the soft sea foam, not as much of the garden green. It's just kind of a softer um, uh, paper. So I decided to go with a bit of a softer color palette. So to start with some adhesive, if I could find where I put it. Yes, it's right here next to me. Okay. And we're just going to lay down these pieces. And my silicone craft mat is sitting right here. Let's grab that too, because I know I'm going to need it. And it's kind of to work on the silicone craft mat as well. Okay. And if you are not familiar with the uh, stamp and seal, it's really handy to have the silicone craft mat because a lot of times the adhesive kind of retracts in. And if you just simply slide it on the craft mat, it helps pull forward uh, the adhesive so you can 
keep doing doing your thing. Okay. That's number two. Now, it's especially good to have a silicone craft mat because I'm going to turn these over and double check that I didn't put them in the wrong position. I still want to make sure that that pattern is continuous. And um, with the silicone craft mat there, I don't have to worry about it sticking to my paper because it won't stick to the silicone craft mat. Love that. Okay, so there's the continuous pattern. Don't want to do it upside down. There we go. So I am sure I don't really need to ask this, but I'm guessing some of you have this paper and also love it. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a top choice of celebration items. And um, look what I did. So see, this is perfect, right? That is not in the right position. So this is, it's very good to lay them out. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, but case in point, right? I had it on the wrong side. So I want to make sure I'm attaching it to my cardstock in the right position. Anyway, um, celebration items are available while supplies last. So if you love this paper, don't delay in placing your order and getting it um, because who knows how long it's going to last. Hopefully a while. I have a feeling Stampin' Up! knows that this is the kind of thing we love and they've stocked up on this, but you know, you never know uh, how much there is and how quickly it's going to run out. So I'm just going ahead and laying these down and you can probably tell I am not pressing down. I'm just trying to get it in position so I can get some even spacing and adjust the spacing if I need to. Now the funny thing about this card is I am not usually a pastels sort of girl and there's you know some pretty soft colors in this particular piece of designer series paper and I still love it. I tend to go with the more bold colors. And so what I'm really doing there is just trying to make sure that the space here is the same as here, as here, as here, and top and bottom. Just kind of checking that out. It's not exactly perfect, but let's see if we can adjust it a little bit. So you can see it really didn't stick because I didn't press it down and that's what I wanted. So I'm looking at all the lines to make sure that they're make sure they're the same width, top and bottom, side and side. Okay, there we go. I think we got it. I'm ready to commit. So we're gonna just go ahead and press it down. So there we have our nice little continuous pattern with a little separation in there. I think it looks really, really pretty. All right, so next up. So I'm not seeing anybody comment saying that they have this paper. <laughs> but I'm guessing you do. Comment and say if you do. Let's see. Um, yes. Oh, you never thought to put cardstock um, in with the designer paper. Oh, I'm glad you like that idea, Rita. All right, so we've got my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, my base plate, and I'm using my, um, this layer is the one for uh, the 3D embossing folders. Now, uh, there is the new one, the more current one, I think is gray, but this is the one that Stampin' Up! initially um, offered uh, to us, and I got it and have not gotten the new one that's gray, but yours is likely gray. Okay, so now I've got my embossing folder and I'm just going to take my, if I can open it up, <laughs> open it up. Now, um, when I did mine, I want the, um, the dots to be poking in. I find it to be a little bit more of a subtle look. And with this kind of subtle, beautiful paper, I definitely want the subtle look. So... The side that is right here, you can, well, you could feel it if you had yours, is the, the, um, the dots poking up. So if I do it like this, it's going to poke those holes up into my thing, and I want the opposite. So instead, I'm going to just turn this over, 
this is where the pokey dots are and I'm going to press it down like this. And I do want it to be straight up and down because I want that pattern to be vertical. It's going to poke those holes down or not really holes, but spots down into the paper. And that's the look that I want. You can choose obviously to do it however you want, um, but I like that more subtle texture. I don't always choose that option, but in this case, um, it's what I like and uh, yeah, what I often like, but not always. I reserve the right to change my mind. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, your, your um, paper is on the way, Sharon. Wonderful. Love that. Um, you have the paper and the stamp and the folder. Let's see. Wonderful. Anything with them yet? Well, I hope you're inspired after tonight's presentation to make something. All right. So um, now this is dry embossed. You can take you can take a look at the the shape there. Um, the close up and somebody commented on this. It almost looks like um, uh, what is it? Um, gosh, paper towel uh, texture, which. Um, not always, not the first thing I would think of, you know, uh, wanting on a card, but it's, it's, it works. I like it. So, you know, okay. So now I'm going to actually, um, and then you can see the back side. you can actually see the texture poking up and it looks really pretty on the back actually. Um, now I want to pop this up just a bit. Um, before I do that, I'm going to wrap some ribbon around it. And I've chosen a couple of ribbons to play with here. So I do have some boho blue ribbon and I'm going to try that one on here and see what I think of it. Actually, let's go with that. I like to leave it on the roll because then I use a little bit less ribbon because I have the, the long end attached to the roll to be my one side. Okay. So let's just go ahead. Actually. Okay. Now, I tied these together when I did my initial cut. So we're going to try doing that again. It's a little bit challenging, but there's something about this, what is it called? Wavy trim that made me think of uh, like a bird's nest. It's got this sort of texture, makes me think of like, you know, the nest sticks or whatever. So I, I kind of like this look. So let's see if we like it on this one as well. Okay, turn both of those over to that side. So you can see it's like uh, trying to hold them together. Now, uh, I have a trick to show you. Trick a trick. This is a nice handy trick when you're doing something where you feel like you just don't have enough hands. So what I'm going to do is I've got that lined up and held taut. I'm just going to grab my little small binder clip hold it in place and then do the same thing on the other side. And that way, when I'm tying my ribbon, I don't have to, you know, look at that. No hands, mom. <laughs> I can go ahead and tie it without having to hold it exactly in place. So this is a nice little, makes it so much easier. Okay. So, and this is kind of thick because I've got two ribbons here, but let's go ahead and tie this knot. Um, the other little trick I like is to think about the ribbon, like your two fingers kind of wrapped around each other nice and smooth, and that'll give you a nicer knot in my experience. Okay, I'm going to take my ribbons over this side. The only downside to keeping it on the roll is that you got to mess with the, the roll. Okay. Tucking that in, holding on to the knot with my finger right there. Oh yeah, you like it the deboss side, Rita? Yes, me too. Oh, use tear and tape to hold those together. That's a good idea. Okay, now that's really thick. I think this, um, the boho blue ribbon is much thicker. <laughs> Check that out. That is like monstrously big. Like that is not going to work. I am not doing that. Can you see that? The green, um, the garden green ribbon is much thinner. So tying it with the, um, 
this wavy trim worked just fine. It's big, but it's not so big. This is like humongous and I can't tie it tight enough to get it to be um, more, um, you know, less lower profile. So I'm going to take that off and think of another thing to do with this. Um, so we're going to just hold that on there because that'll make it easier for me. holding the two ribbon pieces together. And I think what I'm going to do is just maybe wrap it around the front and I might not tie anything at all. There's always other ways to do things, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to like that look. So we'll go ahead and just put some adhesive on the back side. And I'm going to keep holding this together just with the clip because it'll make it easier still. Put that into the right position. I think I need my silicone craft mat there. Decide on where I want it. Now, obviously, the only the blue ribbon's going to attach, but I will grab a glue dot and attach the one ribbon to the other. like that. Okay. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Take that binder clip off. Okay, I see comments. I need to look at your comments. Um, oh yes, you have different widths of tear and tape. Yes, that can be handy. Um, oh, I like you like the tip with the binder clip. Hi, Sharon. I just noticed I did your name up there and I didn't say hi. So hello. Good to have you here. All right. So we're going to wrap that around the back side. Take off the binder clip. Take it off of there as well. And then we'll grab another glue dot to attach the wavy trim. Let's see what we think of that, how that looks. I think that's going to work. I think I'm going to like that. Alternative look. Okay, need my scissors. Just go ahead and trim that off. All right. I think we're good with that. I don't think I'm going to add any more ribbon. I could, of course, tie it in there, but... And that is, um, I'm not sure if it's going to stay down, but if it doesn't, we'll put a glue dot in later. All right, so next I'm going to turn this over, and I wanted to add a couple of layers of um, cardstock to give it a little bit of height without it having it, um, oh my God, I just, what happened there? Please tell me that that just, that was weird. <laughs> I'm sure that that was the right screen. Somehow I popped back to my face. I don't know if I press something. I hope that the big screen table all that time. <laughs> I think it was. Somebody comment. Give me some reassurance here. <laughs> that was too funny. Um, okay, anyway. So I want this to be popped up, but not as popped up as dimensionals would um, would be. That was very strange. Okay, so I went in to look for some scraps, which is one of my the things I like to do these days. And I found these old scraps that have scoring on them. I don't even know what I use this for. Some box. I was making a box, but I didn't use them. So I'm going to use them for my layers. Why not make use of them? Because I will never use them with the score lines um, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some white glue to that first layer attach it and I kind of want it above my my ribbon so that the ribbon doesn't hold it up I guess I did bump something yeah well I'm so glad I hope I wasn't uh, my face wasn't there for too long you guys don't want to see my face you want to see the project I am quite sure of that Okay, so there's that. And then um, 
I kind of wanted a third layer, so I'm going to use this smaller one. I meant to sandwich it in the middle, but it's okay. It will be okay. Unless I can pull them apart. Probably already attached. Oh, no. <laughs> I wanted it sandwiched in the middle, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to sandwich it in the middle. Let's go like that. All right. That's just going to give me a little bit, a little extra height. Okay. So now we're ready to um, almost to put this on the front of our card. The last thing I need to do is attach my panel of fresh freesia. I think I'm my piece of this all out. <laughs> Let's grab another one. I have many around. And that's just going to be, what do I have? About three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and just attach that. It's just a little accent in behind the layers. Make sure it's centered. There we go. So you can see the same design, different colors, different designer paper. So I was looking at my designer papers today thinking, I could redo this layout in so many different, with so many different designer papers. And uh, the roll, roll um, uh, designer paper was one of the ones that jumped to mind that could be really fun um, with this totally different look. It'd be like a black and white color scheme, but uh, very fun. All right, so now I need to figure out a sentiment. So we're gonna go ahead and heat emboss a sentiment. Now I'm gonna try this um, soft sea foam and we'll see what we think. Um, and I'm considering some other options as well. Let's start with this one. So I'm just gonna rub that with my embossing buddy. Grab my Versamark ink and just stamp it at the top. I do want it to be straight on. It's kind of important that it's straight on for um, the next thing that I'm gonna do. Well, after I heat emboss that is. All right, and then we're just going to put it into the white embossing powder. Tap that off. Now the white's going to be pretty subtle, so I have an idea for maybe how to make that show up a little bit more. But let's heat emboss it first, and then we'll go from there. The heat tool, of course, has to heat up a bit before it melts. There we go. Looks good. All right, so now I'm going to grab my hexagon punch and you can probably tell that this stamped punched piece is smaller than this hexagon here. So we're going to do the, uh, I think this is the same trick I might have showed last week. <laughs> but I love it, so I can't help myself. All right, so we're gonna actually just put, feed this in. This piece of cardstock is precisely two and three sixteenths wide, and it's ever so slightly less wide than the inside. That allows me to slide this in and just trim off the top wherever I want it, as close as I want it. And I do want the left and right sides to still be parallel to the opening of the punch. So there's punch number one. It's very faint <laughs> because of that pale, pale paper. So then I'm going to turn it over and then just stick it in here again, pull it through, and it's upside down, of course, but I can tell what my uh, how much I have in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and punch that off. 
So there we go. Now I made this smaller than the, um, the size of the punch itself, but you could also make it as big as you want, as long and as short as you want. So um, I did, I mentioned earlier that I had my team meeting earlier this week and we made a couple of things. Um, one of them was this little treat pouch that is made with this same method. So the outside wrapper is this method of sliding it through just really long and scored. So those are really fun to, to make. Um, uh, yeah. Well, and let's see. Yeah. So anyway, I made several of them. Can you, did you see that? A whole bucket of them. <laughs> they are very fun. And then, uh, used that love from this heartfelt hellos, um, for that thinking Valentine's. I don't know if you guys are thinking Valentine's yet. Um, but it's uh, super fun, fun to be thinking about Valentine's. It's going to be right around the corner. Okay. So let's just put this on here and see what we think. It's a little bit pale, isn't it? <laughs> this color is in the paper, um, but it's a little bit pale. So I did do a few other options. Um, this one, and actually I'll punch this one as well. I want to be able to really see whether this one looks good. There is a little bit of this color um, in the paper, but not very much. So it might be a little bit too strong for it. In fact, I didn't, I, I stamped it a little bit too close to the end. So I have enough room. You can see I, it's a little bit faulty there. <laughs> it's a straight edge uh, instead of being curved. Not exactly what I was looking for. So anyway, but you can kind of see it's a little bit dark you know, to go with this paper because there's a little bit of this color right there, but it's not very much. So I'm going to tend to shy away from that. So the other ones that I thought about and did ahead of time was this with the boho blue, same color as the backing. I'm going to show you guys. You can let me know what you think. Hi, Linda. Good to see you here. Another one with the, what is it? The bubble bath, which is the color of the card base. And then of course this one. So those are the three that I um, am gonna one of I'm gonna use one of the three. Um, now I thought it might be fun to just make them stand out a little bit more and see uh, if I can get a more, you know, an, the image to stand out a bit by adding a little bit ink of ink to add some contrast to the white. Um, you like the boho blue? Okay, see, oh wow. Four votes for boho blue. <laughs> we might just have to be using the boho blue. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, well, I'm still going to go down this path and show you this, and uh, maybe we'll go with the boho blue, but let's just see what this looks like, because this is going to make it look a little bit more rich, sort of a spotlight on the sentiment, and it's going to make it stand out and give us a little bit more this. And then we'll see if you guys all still think we should do the boho blue. So there is a little bit of green added. And then I'm just going to grab a paper towel and make sure that there's no excess ink on the surface of the white. And there was. So look how much brighter that looks now. I think that looks really pretty now. Okay. Everybody's saying boho blue. I'm going to see if I can change your mind. <laughs> okay, so now we've got the green as an alternative, and it stands out more. I, I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure I'm sold, but that is a thought. And then, of course, we're back to the boho blue. But the green, I don't know, the green just adds a pop of something different. I don't know. Let's do this. Hopefully I won't regret it. <laughs> I'm going to add some boho blue to the center of this sentiment. Now, I didn't do this, of course, on the original card, but it just seemed like it might be a nice way to really make that sentiment stand out a little bit more and give the piece a little bit more interest. So I'm going in just in the center. This one might not be as dramatic because it's a darker color. 
Hi, Melissa. Good to see you here. <laughs> Thanks for commenting and saying hello. Oh, I know. I love this designer paper as well. It's the best. I got, tried to get myself to use one of the other ones for my remake, you know, for my second version, but this paper is just too pretty. I couldn't, um, I couldn't not use it. <laughs> okay, so now we got just a, a little bit of a splash of the dark of the blue in the center. Right there. Hmm, I have another idea. There's always more, more things, more options. Think about the green and behind. Just for a tiny little spot of green. I just want more green in there. Ah, a little bit lighter of the green. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to just make it sh stand out, but I agree. It's like, it, it is a little bit too dark, but guess what? I have a second one. <laughs> I did one off camera before I went live uh, and then I did the one live. So let's do this and try to make it a little bit lighter and see what we think. I want it to be enough so you can actually see it, but not so much that it's so dark. A little more subtle. Let's wipe it off, wipe that off. The blue behind the green. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, Sharon. Thanks for the suggestion. Suggestion. I don't recognize your name. Welcome. If you're new here. Maybe I just haven't noticed. Okay, so there's that. That's a little more subtle or a lot more subtle. This one's definitely like way too much. Heavy handed, yes. That one's a little bit better. Let's see if the, the suggestion of the blue in behind, I need to get another piece of boho blue if I'm gonna do that, but that would be the boho blue in behind. Hmm. I've only got the top piece there. Okay, so this one I can do. Let's grab a piece of bubble blue. I love having thing within arm's reach. My uh, cardstock is right down there to my left. And I'm just gonna punch out a full size one and see if it's the right size. I need to size it down, I can do that. So that's a little bit big. Oh, I'm not using I'm not using that one. I'm using this one. Hmm. So that the, the uh, edge is a little more than I would like. Let's see. I have to try one more thing because I'm just. I'm just dying to have more green in there. So we're going to do the same thing with this and then we'll compare, see what we think. So um, I think it was last week, somebody suggested, suggested um, or mentioned the trick of using a, um, another piece of cardstock as sort of a handle. And so I'm going to do that with these because I want them to be, uh, I want my hexagons to be smaller, but it's hard to hold on to it because um, it doesn't, it's uh, too small, right? So I'm just, I put a little bit of adhesive on this scrap piece of green when I just punched out with, and I'm going to take my sentiment, my green one, because that's the one I'm going to try this on, put a little bit of adhesive behind it, attach it on. Let's do, I think I have the right side there. Just gonna attach it so that I have a little edge on the bottom, which is what I want. And then I'm just gonna slip that in and then I can trim off the top just as much as I want. And this might be too much, too much dark green, but I'm going to try it anyway because I'm kind of craving more green on this. I don't know why. It is a little bit too much. But yeah, it's a little bit too dark because all those other colors are so soft. But I can do the same thing with this boho blue if we like that one better. 
same trick. You all agree with me that the dark green is just too dark? Think of the boho blue in behind. Hmm. There's that. Looking at it on camera. <laughs> While you guys look at it on camera. Let's bring it up. There's a closer look. And I don't know might like the boho blue better alone the plain boho blue let's just go simple but i do like it with a little bit of the darkness in the center i think that's what i'm going to go with do you guys agree <laughs> you love the boho boho blue it's the winner yes the garden green is too dark okay you all agree with me thank you for helping me with this uh this process it's fun fun to do it together all right i need some dimensionals we're going to put some dimensionals behind this. And I like to use a lot of dimensionals. We'll go ahead and stick it on. Now, when I was figuring out what paper I was going to use, I also chose where on the paper I was going to cut it out so that I would be sure to have the right place for the sentiment and for a pretty part of the paper to actually show. So um, it, it was planned. This, this happened to be the one quarter, one corner of the designer paper panel. And it worked out nicely to have that right up there as part of my design. Okay, now I have some embellishments to add. I've got all those little extra sentiments. I'm going to put those in with the stamp set and then um, I will have them uh, for some other projects, some other time. <laughs> All right, so these are some of the new embellishments. They go with the, I think it's the kid suite. They're called iridescent foil gems. And they're really pretty neutral. And I'm thinking that they might be a nice option for this. They've got like little gold flecks in them. Um, so we're gonna try that. There's also, this is another new um, embellishment. They're called the Purple Fine Shimmer Gems. They're part of the Perennial Lavender Suite. Um, so one of the colors in here, this is the Highland Heather, I thought might look okay with this design because it kind of pulls out some of that fresh freesia. It's not, um, it might be a nice option. So those are two options. Oh gosh, I found, I found actually a bunch of options. So then I've got the, these pink, um, whatever they're sequins, if he's back sequins, I think those might be nice. And then I also have these fresh freesia, um, uh, gems. So we're going to try a few things and see what we think. All right. And I'm looking for that. So now these, be, being that it's going to be on the blue, so these are actually Misty Moonlight, which is another color that's actually in this um, designer paper pack. So the blue on the blue will probably work just beautifully. And I just tapped the camera, the screen again. <laughs> I look up and I see my face. It's like, no, I'm supposed to be seeing the card. But so I think these blue ones are that's a no-brainer, right? But let's look at some of the other options just for fun. Um, I don't think the pink's going to look right on the blue, but let's just see. Yeah, it kind of gets lost on there. It looks sort of looks purple once you do that. So that's an option. Let's open these babies up, see what they look like. So fun to play with new embellishments, don't you think? Oh, too many options. <laughs> I am the queen of options. I can't help myself. So, yeah. That purple is probably a little bit too purple. And let's try last but not least. Well, we haven't tried those gold ones, but let's try this. I think these are going to also be a really obvious, easy choice. Let's use that side. We have a lot of these. So those might be good because that the um, it will stand up against the blue. So that pink would be good too. 
And then the only other one I haven't tried is this one. And I think these might be a little bit, have too much gold in them. So I'm not going to do those. All right. We've eliminated two out of the four <laughs> options. <laughs> so now I just have to decide if I'm going to do the blue. Let's put a blue on here and just look. Or the pink. And I'm going to do the pink in a different spot so we can see it up there in the corner. So it would be the pink or it would be the blue. I know which one I like. <laughs> Unless you like the pink, chime in. Chime in and say what you think. The blue or the pink. Let's try. <laughs> I see three pinks, four pinks, five pinks. Oh my, six pinks. <laughs> Uh, and okay, let's see what the it looks like with all the pink on there. And who said blue? Who was the outlier? Linda. <laughs> so there is now it stands out a lot more when you have the pink sequins on there than the blue. The blues just kind of blends in. So it kind of just depends on what look you like, whether you like the more blended in look or you like a look that where it stands out a little bit more. So let's just do that quick because there's nothing like seeing it to know, at least in my opinion. So there's the blue. All right. I think we're going to go with the pink. I think the blue blends in a, a bit much and I, while I like it, I think the pink might be a touch bit better in the end. There we go. Majority rules. <laughs> All right. It's a journey. <laughs> Card making journey. So there we go. There's our two finished designs. Pretty, pretty cards, right? Love them. And that's a little bit simpler. I'm going to need to put some uh, glue dots down there because I can see that that ribbon is lifting up. So we're just going to tuck a few under there. I don't know what I'm going to do about the, the wavy trim. Maybe a glue dot under there will work too. It's to be hidden. Hmm. Hmm. That works, I guess. I might put a few more under there. But for now, it looks good. All right. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing these two projects. Um, I'll have a blog post up for this project uh, on Saturday. The video will go live on YouTube on Saturday. And, um, and then I'll have photos um, in the blog post of both. Um, and then next Wednesday in my weekly newsletter, um, there will be a free PDF tutorial with the dimensions and supplies and all that good stuff. So um, if you want to actually remake it and know everything and not have to have remembered everything I said, <laughs> um, you'll have that to play with. So just a couple of quick little announcements, my usual. So you guys know the mini catalog and celebration is happening now. The joining special is happening now until the end of February. Um, the two options for your free gift, one is this, the uh, glass mat studio, which includes three items and is at $60 value. So that's in addition to, um, you know, the extra $26 you're getting because you're getting $125 in product for $99. And um, the second option is you pick an extra $30 in product instead of getting the glass mat. So um, two really cool joining uh, special offer um, options. And then uh, I have a, an online stamp club for um, making projects. I have my in-person stamp club and I have an online stamp club. And right now I'm, I'm offering a, an extra gift um, when you join either uh, in-person or online stamp club. Um, the, the commitment is a purchase every other month. So it's six purchases in a year of $55. And then at the end of the year, you get hostess rewards. If you're the online club, in-person club members get them based upon party sales here in person. So it's a little bit different, but basically getting free Stampin' Up! products. You get catalogs mailed to you automatically when every time a new catalog comes out and then 
um, sort of the, we have a, a Zoom event for online people. So you get, get to be a part of a little stamping community. And if you're here in person, you get that in-person community. So it's uh, lots of fun. I've been doing clubs all 20 years that I've been a demonstrator. <laughs> and I'm coming up on year 21 um, in March. So I always do something fun and uh, look back um, uh, at a project I've done in the past. Uh, I called it Rewind Redo when I get to uh, my anniversary. So that's going to come in March. So uh, yes, um, let's see what else. Um, now the club project for January and February is the faux parchment paper technique class. So I'm incorporating an interesting uh, technique into each club class. Um, you can do the club option where you join club or you can take the class a la carte. So um, if you're on my email list, you um, should have gotten an email about either option, depending on um, what you're interested in or whatever option you're interested in. Um, so, and let me know if you are interested. There are links in the video description as well for all that good stuff, if you wanna check that out. Now, I'm not gonna be live next week because next week is my club class. So I'll be busy preparing for that and doing that. So we'll not do Facebook Live next Thursday. My next one will be the 25th. So this is, these are all the same updates from last week. So I just got to cross that out. <laughs> So the 25th, so two weeks from tonight will be my next Facebook Live. Um, and and there you go. And I already did my free PDF tutorial updates. So um, so there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's project and um, will join me for a club or the a la carte faux parchment paper class or Facebook Live in another two weeks. <laughs> um, play and craft with me. It's super fun. <laughs> All right, everybody. Till next time. Thank you so much for joining in and you make it so much fun because you interact with me and help design and create. And I love doing that together. So thank you for um, participating in that way. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Whenever. Happy crafting. <laughs>